Good morning, everybody. So I know the sanctuary is a little chilly, and it actually isn't for me. Uh, we, have, we were having a lot of trouble with hornets uh, at the first service, so we decided to keep the sanctuary a little cool, and maybe that would encourage them to stay up in the lights. So, <laughs> so that's, that's the reason why it's a little chilly. I hope you've got a coat that you can keep warm in. But regardless, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. God gathers us from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west to worship him. Will those who are able please stand as we worship God together? Good and upright is the Lord. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. So we're having a hymn sing today, and so you may choose your favorite hymn, either from our Blue Presbyterian hymnal or from the favorite hymns book, and call out the number and we'll sing a verse from their favorite hymn. Five fifty nine out of the hymn book. Five five nine out of the hymnal.
Any other hymns? 307, 307 in the blue hymnal. <clears throat> fight the good fight. Okay. We will be having a hit, the hymn sing continue for the rest of the service, so keep looking, and uh, when we move on to that, we will do that. Well, we know that Christ is our all, that God changes not, and that he is always with us, but sometimes we feel like we're not with the program because of the things that we've done. We need to remember that Jesus Christ came to forgive us, not condemn us, so we can confess our sins knowing that we've been forgiven. Let's confess our sins now together. Dear Lord, we think we have learned the lessons you teach us, but often we fall short. We fail to call out injustice or forgive those who have wronged us. We criticize those who are new to the faith and exclude so many from receiving your blessings. Our actions hurt others, ourselves, and you. Forgive us when we make wrong choices and work against your kingdom. Grant us grace enough to learn your lessons, to change our behavior, and to follow you. Amen. In Jesus Christ, you are a new creation. All the old has passed away. Behold, everything is brand new. Know that in Christ you are forgiven and be at peace. Pass by Christ's peace to one another.
God speaks to us and beckons for us to listen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear God's word by singing together, Change My Heart, O God. Our scripture lesson comes from Matthew chapter 21, from verses 33 through 46, and I'm going to read out of the New Revised Standard Version today. Listen to an <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the garden, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They, being the Pharisees and chief priests, said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builder rejected has become a cornerstone? This is, was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Let's give our glory and praise to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So you all will be really happy to hear that this is the final lesson in our series on hard lessons of Jesus. Um, I know that some of you have been complaining, not to me, but to other people about the fact that I've been preaching all these hard lessons and I, they haven't been really feel-good lessons. But what you need to realize is I don't pick the lessons at this point. These are the lessons that are in our curriculum for our children. So who you, the people you should really be feeling sorry for are the Sunday school teachers who have had to teach these hard lessons over these last several weeks. So we have this final lesson that we are looking at, and actually the one next week isn't all that terrific, but I'm taking a hopefully a more positive look at it, but we're, we're good. 
aim towards changing directions from these really hard lessons that Jesus has for us. What we need to realize in this Matthew passage is it comes immediately after the ones that we've been reading up until now in Matthew. So Jesus is still addressing the chief priests and the Pharisees. They have questioned his authority, and so he is answering them, not directly, but through these parables. And so in this parable, more than in the other even, I've read recently, in this parable, Jesus establishes his authority in no uncertain terms as the Son of God. Now, he doesn't come out straight away and say to them, I'm God's Son, you need to listen to me. But it seems pretty clear in this parable. It was interesting as I was reading through commentaries to try and find some kind of a positive take on this particular lesson so that I wouldn't be hitting you over the head yet one more week about how we're supposed to live our life of faith. Um, I was reading it, and it was clear that these, um, these theologians, these Bible teachers, did not live in a rural area because they seemed to be totally unfamiliar with the concept of leasing land for farming. And so I thought, well, gosh, that's really not that... It, they said, well, this is really unusual, and I'm like, not so much. You know, it's not that unusual for somebody who's decided that they want to retire from, from farming or they have more property than they, want to take, than they can take care of, that they lease the land to somebody else in order to take care of it. And that's what the case was here. This landowner had this property, he had set it up for farming, but he wasn't living anywhere nearby, and so he rented the property out. He leased the property out to tenant farmers so that they would take care of it. And in this particular case, and I don't know that this is necessarily true nowadays, but in this particular case, how the farmers paid back the landowner was by giving them a a portion and probably a good size of the produce of the farm, products that were raised on the farm. And so he, cut, he goes away and he, he spends, uh, he, he knows that the harvest is finished, and so he sends his servants, his slaves, as it says in the, in the, the version that we were reading, he sends them to collect the harvest, their pay what they owe for the, the opportunity to farm the land. And so these tenants are not all that good, and so what they do is they kill all that the land sends. And finally sends, as well, let me send my son. My son, obviously, is a representation of me. They will certainly respect him. But instead, the tenants kill him as well. Now, to put this in today's terms, this would be like a landowner who has somebody leasing their farm and is, then goes off to Texas or to Florida and, uh, and, or to wherever they go um, and then se sends it back. But what's happening on the ground with the tenants is that they're all saying, well, wait a minute here. We're doing all the work, and he gets all the glory. He gets all the profit. We should be getting all the profit. We should get everything that we deserve because we're the ones doing the work. What did he do? Nothing. He didn't do anything. But what we're doing is more important. And so what they're doing is refusing to pay because they think that they, that they deserve more because they're the ones working the land. Well, what Jesus is trying to say to them is that you might try to get rid of the son. You might think, and as a matter of fact, these tenants, the wicked tenants in the parable, decided if they killed the son, then they could have the land because there would be no one to inherit it anymore. And so what he's saying is you might try to kill the son to get the inheritance, but I'm not going to let you. He's turning back now from the tenants to the son. And he is saying to them that he is the son and that he's not going to let them win this battle. He then starts to quote other scripture. And the scripture passage he quotes is that the stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. And so what he's saying to these, these priests and Pharisees is that I know that what you're going to try to do is to kill me. And we know that, in fact, they did have him arrested. They had him killed. 
But that wasn't the end of the story. The end of the story is that Jesus was raised from the dead and he is in control. He is in charge and evil no longer has any sway over this earth. He may have been the one rejected, but now he is the foundation upon which God is building his new kingdom. And so the new kingdom of God is going to have different tenets. Now, what we need to remember in this particular case is that he's not necessarily saying you're out completely as my old tenants. But what he is saying is that unless you change the way you're doing things, you can no longer be part of the kingdom. The door is always open to those tenants to change their mind. The door is always open to the Pharisees and the chief priests to change their mind. It then becomes their choice whether they want to give Jesus the authority as the Son of God or whether they want to continue to take over for God and steal the inheritance. But Jesus is the owner of the inheritance. And what Jesus is doing in his life is he's not only maintaining the inheritance, but he's inviting others to receive. He's inviting others into his family, and we then receive the benefits. Not only, though, is he the foundation, cornerstone of the new kingdom, but he does provide a stumbling block to those who don't want to give him the authority. Because those who will say, I can do it on my own, I don't need you, Jesus. I can make it okay on my own, thank you. You don't need to get involved in my life. They are setting themselves up for failure. Just as the chief priests and the Pharisees set themselves up for failure by continuing to reject Jesus. And so we need to remember too that we are now the new tenants. We are now the new tenants of that field. We are now the new caretakers of God's kingdom. And if we try to take over God's mission in this time and place, we're going to fail too. But if we continue to allow Jesus to be the authority over our life, if we live our lives, and, and most importantly for us, our ministry as a church, asking God for his assistance, asking God for his direction, uh, knowing that what we are doing is not for us, but for him, then we will continue to thrive and produce fruit. Every month, both our deacons and our session pray a prayer. It's the same prayer every single month. And it talks about the fact that we are not going to seek what we want, but we want to seek what God wants. We want to seek God. And we pray that prayer to remind ourselves that as we are making decisions, as the session makes decisions, as the deacons make decisions, it is not because we're thinking it's the best business plan or it's, the, or, or it's what will make us happy, but that we're really truly seeking what God wants for this church and the direction that God wants us to go. And what God wants us to be are, is faithful tenants, faithful servants, and we will see the fruits of our labors come to harvest. We need to remember that we are serving our living and risen Lord, and he will not let us fail. Amen and amen. This is the final time that we're going to be reading from the Confession of 1967, so let us affirm our faith together. In Jesus Christ, sing does that did anybody find a hymn they want to sing 27 in the favorite hymns 
27 in the favorite hymns. I love to tell the story. others one more 57. 57 also in this book okay 57 in the favorite hymns standing on the promises Well, now we have our time for God sightings. Has anybody seen God active and alive in their life this week and would like to share? Yesterday we had a windy raw morning, but it was a cool morning. Uh, we had the blessing of the animals. We had quite a few cats and dogs here, and we had some pictures of cats and dogs and some horses, and it was a good time. Pastor Nita read out of the Bible about the animals and so on, so it was really a cool event, and hope we can do it next year and have more animals come. <laughs> and it was kind of cool. As I gave the very last benediction, I said, may the Lord bless all creation, and the sun came out. <laughs> when I was finished with the blessing, the sun disappeared. So <laughs> well, Jack and I went on vacation last week, and we uh, 
were running around or driving around in the Mich up, upper Michigan. And on the right way over, uh, the colors weren't very good. But the next day, they popped out, and they were beautiful. And uh, we were in the woods somewhere, and that little rain came, and I go, oh. But the sun was out, and we saw this gorgeous rainbow. And uh, that was the God sighting. Any other God sightings that anyone would like to share? Our prayer covenant this week is with Jordan and Christine Patterson and Sue Pajoli. So we'll be praying that uh, they will see God's presence and feel God's presence in their life this week. Uh, we do want to keep Roy Veal in our prayers. Roy had open heart surgery uh, to have a valve replacement. That went okay, but now he seems to be having trouble with his blood pressure. Every time he stands up, he either gets dizzy or faints, and that's not a good thing. He's still at the hospital. So be praying for him that, um, that this gets regulated so that he can come back home, which is what his goal is at this point. Are there any other joys or concerns that anyone would like to share? Mary is feeling better. That is a, definitely a joy. It was awesome yesterday because uh, Mary said, I don't need to sit down. I'm feeling strong. She stood for the whole service and wasn't out of breath. That is definitely a good thing. We want to keep Bob Matheson in our prayers. His surgery was postponed, and so we will be praying. It's scheduled for the end of the month. We're actually praying that somebody cancels for theirs so that he can have his surgery uh, early. But if not, then that he, his pain will be relieved during this interim period. Are there any other joys or concerns? Let's come to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you love us, that you care for us, that you want to be with us, and that you want us to follow you. Lord, we pray for those that are resting in our hearts today, that you will continue to be with each one of them. We pray for those who are sick, and for those receiving treatments and therapy. We pray for those awaiting tests and surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. We pray for caregivers. And we pray for those who mourn. We pray for the poor and the oppressed, for those dealing with mental illness and addiction. Our hearts continue to go out for those who are fighting human-made and natural disasters. We pray for those who live in violent places. And we especially pray for those who put their lives on the line to help us. Lord, we pray for our world's leaders. And we pray for your church that we will be a place of hope, of healing, of love. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven,
By action of the session, a special congregational meeting of Middle Creek Presbyterian Church is called for Sunday, October 22nd at approximately 12.30 p.m. following a potluck dinner. The purpose of this meeting is to elect three trustees for the class of 2019 and to discuss the session proposed 2018 budget. I know we're still looking for two more trustees, so uh, if, it, if God moves your heart to help in that way, uh, please contact one of our current trustees and they will be happy to add you to the list. Uh, also, with regard to our stewardship campaign, um, hopefully you filled out the pink or blue card that said, uh, what, do you, what do you love about Middle Creek Church? That's due today. If you didn't, there are cards still in the back for that. And uh, if you did, you can put it in the offering plate and that will work fine for, for doing that. But there's cards still in the back. We'll see them posted up on the poster board over here in the corner uh, next week. And for this week, our... Um, our question is, who at our church has made a difference in your life? And so you receive that in your envelope. If you want to uh, fill that out, you certainly may uh, and give it here, or else there will be some on the back table next week for you to do. And uh, if you have not received your pledge form or the envelope, uh, please make a note of it and put it on Dana's desk, and uh, she will communicate that to the Ministry of Direction. So we want to make sure that you do that. For those who weren't here last week, uh, we're doing this as just a little bit of a uh, lead up to the congregational meeting on October 22nd to get us to remember why it is that we like being here at Middle Creek Church and why God is blessing us through it. We're continuing, we're looking for donations for care packages for our uh, college students and military personnel. If anyone in your family uh, is a college student or in the military, please make sure that the deacons get your, uh, that person's address. They will be fi uh, filling up those packets, packages the beginning of November. We are still collecting for hygiene, school kits, and emergency cleanup buckets, and as we know, they are still very much in need. We have yet another uh, batch of flooding today, that, or yesterday, that, um, that has hit the south. We have a message on our video. Tengo 15 años y estoy en segundo de bachiller. Mi color favorito es rosado. Eh, estamos en la comunidad de Babor Abajo, me gusta comer, me gusta el arroz, la bichuela, la carne, me gusta muchísima comida. Ah, para lo, la comunidad, la siembra, lo que siembran los agricultores para ayudarlos. Ah, porque es importante para ellos con las plantas y porque cuentan con el apoyo del servicio social. Bueno, la siembran, eh, también de la que siembran lo utilizan para comer en la casa, cuando es grande la cosecha, la venden, etc. Queremos dar gracias a esa gente que ayudan y se esfuerzan y caminan para que el servicio social le aporte la ayuda a los agricultores de esta comunidad. So I don't think it can be any clearer. We walk, she eats. And we do that, we feed them by way of sending them seeds so that their farmers can plant for their families. Just want to let you know who is on the Middle Creek uh, Church uh, Crop Hunger Walk team. Uh, Ryan Baumgarten, Brenda Baumgarten, Megan Baumgarten, Jack Baumgarten, Matthew Baumgarten, Glenn Burkhart, Linda Burkhart, Dresden Burkhart, Pat Steva, Garrett Zoot, and Vivian Zoot. And please generously support your crop, crop Hunger Walk team this year. And we still have uh, room for more people on our team. 
So see me after church, and I'll uh, be able to provide you with a Crop Hunger Walk sponsorship envelope to uh, be a part of the team and help raise funds. Thank you. So I know a lot of you are like me and say, well, I can't walk. My legs are bad. My knees are bad. My hips hurt. I just don't have that kind of energy. Well, you can do something called spirit walking. And what spirit walking means is that you get spirits, but you don't walk. Because the reality is, the point of this is not to walk. The point of this is to give. And so we would encourage everybody uh, to um, get an envelope and go and ask people to give because a quarter of the proceeds from the hunger walk come back into the community. You don't have to be a great walker in order to, to support this cause. So we would encourage you. This week I am going away. I'm going to kids and do a little bit of work. Uh, if you have an emergency this week, please contact a deacon. Uh, if you call during the daytime, you can certainly call the office and let Dana know, and she will help you contact your deacon in case, of, uh, in case you need that. We are signing people up for the Thanksgiving dinner. It's the first Saturday of the month this of November, and so uh, we have a few people signed up. Um, if you don't know what you're providing yet, that's okay. Just sign up for a table, um, and eventually you can certainly put down what you're going to provide. The deacons are asking for some assistance for people to roast turkeys. So if you have an oven and you're pretty good at roasting a turkey, uh, we, need, we, we can provide the turkey. The deacons can pay for the turkey, but uh, they need people who are willing to roast it and bring it here. And so if you are willing to be one of the roasters, please see Jan Graves or Janet Frawley and let them know that you're willing to put a turkey in your oven and bring it here for the church use. Um, all of our turkey roasters went off the deacons, so, <laughs> so we need some assistance in that. Um, I think that's it for now. I know that the PW is having a salad luncheon, and there are tons of salads downstairs. So come on down. There's probably plenty of food. And, they, and Peggy, you've got an awesome program planned. There's a video, so there you go. A funny video, a funny Christian video. So uh, please feel free to go down and eat something with them and watch the video. But now at this point, let us continue to do God's mission in this world through our presentation of tithes and offerings.
Lord, bless these gifts that we offer to you because of your generosity to us. Use it for your glory and for your service to help this world know who you are and how much you love them. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So I want to apologize because in one of my prayers yesterday, I did ask God to bless the bees and the flying critters. And they must have all gotten converted and they decided to come into church today. So I apologize for that. One last song for the hymn sing. Does anybody? What one? 21. 21 in, this, in the favorite hymns? He touched me. That's a good one. And we'll sing both verses. So the reason we're doing the hymn sing is because I couldn't find any hymns that went with the uh, message today. Although, John's, yours would have been a good one. Fight the good fight. That would have been a good one. So... <laughs> And let's reach out to one another as we give and receive the blessing. <clears throat> the grace of Christ attend you. The love of God surround you. The Holy Spirit keep you. That you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.